Hello there, me and Ryan from Bleep Sounds are making a collaboration series in which we talk about how we can make sound designs and the creative process behind the scenes and how we can implement that in a real game using Godot Engine. So Ryan is here with me and I will let him introduce himself and what will be up in his video. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Uh, on our video on the Blip Sounds YouTube channel, we are going to be creating sound effects from scratch for Kitchen Tales. Uh, we create a couple different sounds and we also show off the process of recording the sounds from scratch using a piece of ham, a carrot, and a door. So if you want to see how we turn that into the sounds in this video, Go check out the Blip Sounds YouTube channel and check out the collaboration we did. But yeah, Pig Dev, thank you so much for having me here, and I really appreciate this. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes of it. <laughs> thank you so much for inviting me, Ryan. So without further ado, let's get started. This is the animation that I talked about. What I was thinking about doing is like having a jump effect at the beginning, something like right at when the character starts the, the jump. Like here. Okay. And another one right when the character reaches the ground. Something like here. A like squashing, maybe something a, a bit liquid, like a tomato squashing. Yeah. Do you have any of those that you have in mind? Like, I, I was here in the dash, for instance, one of these. And I think that's perfect for, like, when the character reaches the ground. Sure, yeah. First, high pitched at the beginning and then it kind of like dents after. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be good. Um, and then if we were to take the, so the dash and then the, the jump can just be used for the regular jump maybe too. And then we can just separate those into two different sections of the animation. Here we can basically just drag them into the animation. So if I add this, I will add the, the sound effect here. And with that, we just need to add a, an audio track. Perfect. Basically just drag the sounds here and say when they will begin. Like this. Uh, did you hear that? I, I did not hear it, no. I didn't hear that, yeah. Is the volume up? Uh, it should, because... Did it play inside of a... Uh, in there? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Huh, interesting. Maybe, uh, I think that it, it was starting before the animation. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so currently I think that it is, the, the pitch doesn't seem to be right for the character. I agree. I, I think it should be a little bit lower pitched, if that's what you're thinking. Yeah. Um... Can decrease the pitch here? Oh, so did you actually ever try to use Godot? Uh, yeah, I yeah, I have before. Um, we have some... <laughs> I really... Godot is just such a good <laughs> engine, and it's becoming more and more viable. Um, so right now, I, we really try and teach with uh, WYs and FMOD and Unity and Unreal, but Godot is definitely on the, on the list coming soon for us. Cool. So I don't think how this happens in other engines, but we kind of have like a mixing table here. Little... Oh, yeah. Uh, one thing that I thing that happens is that if we use the pitch on this um, audio stream player to denote, uh, I think that the, um, it, it will kind of like stretch the sound. This is basically how pitch scaling works. Is it correct? Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty common. Um, it kind of just depends on um, the people that see my uh, video. They'll see that pitch shifting usually uh, is measured by semitones. But when you're, and it's really common to just have it on like a, a negative one to one value or a float value when you're in a game engine like this. In Unity, I'm pretty sure it's common to do that at least. Mm. So for instance, if an, an audio, like a sample, uh, a sound effect is has like a duration of one second and we pitch it up like for one dot five, it will cut by half the duration of the sound effect. Uh, yeah, it should. Um, yeah, it should be some pretty close to that. I'm pretty sure. Or if we no, if we did it by two, it would go in half. It's just uh fifty percent then. Right, right, exactly. Okay, so I uh, I know that this happens when we mess with this pitch scale, but if we mess with an audio effect, I, I will add another buzz here, and if we add another like pitched, uh, I think that this pitch shift uses another algorithm because this doesn't 
change the duration. Right, right. If I set this to like 50% the scale. This is actually, I've actually never seen all those effects on Goto. I haven't really experimented with the audio too much. There's a lot of stuff on there. Yeah, that, that is like, I think that one of the, the updates would basically just focus really hard on the audio engine. Yeah, I, I'm surprised actually. But I guess it that's what you get with an open source engine. Uh, you just get better and better stuff over time. Yeah, and I, I think that Juan, which is the, the main developer, is like, he really did audio processing, engineering and stuff like this in the past. So he, he's pretty educated in that sense. So with that sound effect, I think that the jump will be uh, a bit lower in the pitch or not because I forget to <laughs> <laughs> to the pitch buzz so now I think that it will work yeah there we go yeah is it good already I think that we can go a I, I, th- I think it's a, yeah I think it should be lower too it's definitely it's lower for sure but it could be more how many years did you work with sound effect already uh man I I think I'm I think I'm five or six years in now doing sound effects for games or doing sound design in general. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's so much fun. I was a music composer before that. And I so I started doing video game music when I was like eight or nine years ago. And then I just picked up sound design as like, because you know how it goes when you, I don't know if you, how many sound designers you've worked with, but most uh, most game developers that are looking for a music composer they also just say, hey, do you also do sound design? Or it's kind of just an expectation. And most sound designers just pick it up over time. It's just like, it's a specialization. People have to know that. It's not like uh, yeah. a, a bonus. Like, oh, you know how to compose and logically you know how yeah. to do sound design. <laughs> it's not like this. It, it's, this the, it's funny because like the, the same, it's the same tools that you use to create a sound effect versus what you, when you create music. But ultimately, creating, it, it really, you have to have such a different mindset to be able to work with both. So I think what you said is probably the best definition. Having Making sure that you, you have people that can actually specialize in it is very important. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. People are making a lot of stuff for audio programs nowadays. And it's really exciting to see where it's going. Same with game development as well. Yeah, it's very exciting. So this is how it sounds like now, but I think that I went too low. Now. <laughs> yeah, that's that sounds a lot better though. Yeah, yeah, I think it's good for now. One one thing that I like to do with my process for mixing sounds in game is just get something to a rough estimate of where we like it, and then we can go back and tweak it later. Oh, perfect. So then we have this squashing. I think that the the dash is like perfect for that. Oh yeah, it has like it. It almost sounds like liquidy almost. Yeah, so I think that if we go like really low, we can get like even the the clicking sound of liquids. Like I I don't know how to to explain, (laughs) but I think that if we go like really low with that, so if I drag and drop this here, see? Oh yeah! Wow. Uh, it's so it's so weird seeing it like next to animations and like just how your brain gets tricked to think a sound sounds a certain way when you see it paired with an animation. It's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. So basically, this is what we currently have. But I think that we can break this this other sound sound effect, this squashing, which is the dash. But this squashing. I don't know, maybe we can use a reverb. I don't know if this will do well. What do you think? Um, so one of my thoughts for Kitchen Tales was, uh, I, I think it would be cool to show off like doing some reverb or seeing how it sounds. But ultimately, I think that considering how simplistic the art style is and you, you have a lot of like very basic shapes and like very simple color coloring on the sh- on the characters, I feel like reverb wouldn't, help really i think that the minimalistic style would be best but i'm down to see what happens when we try it <laughs> so let's see what happens <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i i'm i'm definitely the kind of person that just wants to see how it sounds and then we can we can always take it out so i will create another audio bus so we can separate both wow i'm i'm really glad we're doing this video i i didn't realize how i i didn't realize that there were so many options for audio and goto 
Yeah, I'm really, really happy actually to, to showcase that because audio is like one of those things that doesn't get a lot of attention. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I deal with it on a week to week basis for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that by default, the room size is like way too big. So if we try to play that, actually, we have to add the, the track for this other one. I will remove this. All right. On the track. Reverb, okay. So the reverb one will be the one that will play this. And I think that I send the... Yeah, so the reverb we send to the pitched. So we can get both effects. We could have like both in the same, but I want to separate them. I think it's better, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how... So people always have this like, Oh, how intensive this is to perform, but man... Don't care about that. Just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> After you implement everything, you think about optimizing and this kind of boring stuff. But when you are just designing stuff like this, just go for it. Yeah, my, my mindset is to add as much as possible and then I can just remove stuff later if it doesn't work. Yeah, if someone like complains like, hey, your game is like frying my, my computer, and then you can think about like, yeah, I need some optimization. But until then, just go for it. Absolutely. So, oh, it's this one. So we already have these. Let's see how this sounds. Huh? Oh, where's the reverb? Oh, okay, so <laughs> I forgot again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> huh? See? Okay, that, does, that did help it a lot, actually. Uh, the <laughs> I think that the room size is, like, way too big. Yeah, it's not coming to, through super well on my end, but I, 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 I'll trust your judgment on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that on your end is like way too low. Yeah, it's, it's a little quiet, but it's it's okay. I will change this just so we can get the real sound. Because if we use the this audio stream player here that I'm using, it gets like positional. So depending on the way I am on the, on the editor, we'll get mm -hmm. like lower or higher uh, volume. So, for instance, oh. this way, and try to play that. Oh, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Now I hear it now. Let's change this to one that doesn't have positional. So, I think that this is... Can you hear it better now? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear it much better. So I think I my, my opinion is kind of the same still. I think th that's a lot of reverb. If we were to add a lot a little bit uh if we were to add reverb to this, I think that we should do like the a very very small amount to this. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think that the, the thing is just that just enough to say okay, this was like a something that does a lot of damage. Right. This feeling. Yeah, I would I I would go to like point like 2 maybe um personally and um i i would even maybe do some more dampening too like do like a point seven or point eight on the dampening so what does dampening does i, I really don't know this is... so um think of it like acoustic treatment in a room so if you have a, a room with uh empty with walls with nothing on it and you were to add like acoustic treatment to the walls it would basically make it so the reverb doesn't go as long is how it works Oh, got it. So basically, like, how does the wall absorb the, the sound? Correct. Correct. Okay. So uh, you suggested that we increase that? Yeah, yeah. Increase that. Uh, increase it to 0. 0.7. I think that we can, like, decrease a little bit of the dry. Dry is like the input, right? The input sound? Correct. Okay. So I think that we can decrease just a little bit. And then, and then, for those that don't know, what is the uh, the the output once it gets processed through the reverb plugin itself? Oh, right. So basically, this is the the input that it gets, like the the dry sound, and it processes that and gives you this wet. And the full output is the combination of both. Correct. Yeah. Or or if you set the dry to zero, then you would only get the uh, the wet output by itself, or you could do remove the wet all the way, but <laughs> it would defeat the purpose, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so if I want to get just the the literal effect, I can just 
uh, decrease the dry all the way down and leave just the wet. Absolutely. Okay. Let's see how this sounds. No, way. I think that it's way too too much. Yeah. <laughs> it's still too much. Yeah. Um, maybe, um, I'm trying to think what you would do. I think that if it decrease the wetness. Yeah, I think that'd be good. I think, um, if you decrease the wetness and, uh, I want to, can we do add one more effect to the reverb bus actually? Uh, another effect? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so click on uh low pass filter. Low pass. Yeah. Set it to, set the, where it says current. Does that say current hertz? Oh, cut off, cut off. Uh, set that to 10,000. So what this is going to do is it's going to cut off the higher frequencies of the sound effect. Oh, got it. So 10... Yeah, so... We'll cut everything <laughs> up. Yeah, so basically uh, the human hearing range is from 0 to 20,000. So and, and it's exponential. 10,000 is like... 10,000 to 20,000 are like the highest of the highest frequencies that exist. So with this, we're going to be cutting off the highest frequencies and it'll be uh, less, sort of less like in your face, if that makes sense. It'll it'll sound less, uh, as uh, us audio people call it, it'll be less tinny, or it should anyways. Got it. But uh, do we have like this kind of frequencies in our sound? Yep, we sure do. Okay, so let's try to test this. I think that we are almost there. Yeah, it sounds a lot better. The reverb is still way too high. Yeah. I would decrease this just a little bit. And maybe the wetness. Let's see how this goes. I was going to say maybe turn up the dampening. Yeah, um, move it upwards. Oh, uh, sorry, to like uh, 0. 0.8. 0.8. Yeah. Because I think that when you do more dampening, it makes it more, like it removes more of the, or it adds more acoustic treatment, rather. Oh, so it will reflect less. Yes, correct. Oh, we are, we are getting there. I think that the wetness, let's try to get this a little bit down. I think that maybe if we change back to what it was before. Oh, I see. Since it, it is positional, maybe we are getting like the an effect that the player will not hear. Yeah, it might be a very extreme version of what's being processed. Exactly. Yeah, that's already sounding better. So I think that if we go back here, let's see how this goes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sounds great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> let's compare if we remove the reverb. Mm. <laughs> what do you think? Um, so I would also, if you're going to remove the reverb, I would also remove the low pass. The low pass? Yeah. So this is, this will just send it directly to pitched. Yeah, I would say so. Or no, pitched is going to lower the pitch of it as well. Yeah. It, it, it was sending to, to pitched already because. Oh, it already was. Okay. Okay. It's now sending to pitched directly. So you can hear the how it like cuts out the uh, the how the higher frequencies kind of affected it right there. And it sounds way better with the filter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ex agreed. But I don't know about the reverb though. So maybe just the pitched. Maybe. So yeah, with the with the filter, it sounds way better. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, if the reverb is a little bit tough, um, a lot of reverbs that exist in other engines can be tricky to work with. Like even my DAW of choice or my audio editing software Reaper, I don't use the default reverb that comes with it. It's it's so hard to find really good sounding reverbs. So for something like this, I feel like it might be better if I were to for future reference for those watching. Like it, it might be better to when or have your sound designer create 
the sound effect with reverb in mind. So like if I were to, for example, if I were to create the sound effect for you and I, and I included reverb in the original audio file, I think we would get a better sound out of it. Yeah, so yeah, maybe the, the main advantage of all of these effects is that they are dynamic, so we can like change things and maybe in wrong time we can change like sometimes it gets reverb, sometimes it doesn't, but yeah, I think that the, the best way is like the sound designer will do it by design with reverb or not. Agreed, agreed. And I think that in this case we don't we won't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I, I agree with that decision. I'm glad we tried it though. It's a good experiment. Yeah, sounds way better. <laughs> we can see that in game now. Yeah, let's do it. So I think that we can play this directly because uh, one of the coolest thing about Guru is that besides it has like this running in a different window it's basically just making a stream and i will actually decrease i will actually turn off the, the music oh you can do it live nice uh and since it is basically just streaming if i add the tomato the scene like this there there it is <laughs> Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Run! <laughs> so I think that it's good, uh, and we but we can change. I think that the the jump because I think that the pitch is just way too high or way too low actually. Oh, the pitch on the uh, the jump. Yeah. Uh, mm, I don't know. Maybe we, if we change you you. You sent me three uh, versions of this, right? Yeah, yeah, Let's, yeah. We could try another one. Uh, I think that uh, there is. I created three, four different sounds to be used for random variation, uh, but maybe that's for another video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that this is the the highest pitched, or, or not? Let's see all of them together. So I think that. Number two. Let's see, three. Three was definitely... Or play it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> or, or rather, we can animate the, the pitch. We have this option as well. Oh, yeah, let's do that. So let's go here and let's animate the pitch scale. But like, oh my god, that's amazing! I mean, this is this is all stuff that you can do in like a really high end uh, audio program. Like Audacity can't even do this. Uh, yeah, Audacity. I think that doesn't have automation, right? No, it doesn't. Unfortunately. Yeah, this this is like a very core feature that it misses. <sighs> yeah. So we currently is starting with one, but I think that we can end with one. So it's like. It starts low and it goes higher pitched. Yeah, yeah. So I I wouldn't start too low because it already it already does uh, increase in pitch on its own. So I I would start at like maybe if it's at one I would probably start at like point six or seven. So let's see. I don't really hear a difference. <laughs> I don't think I do. I, I might it might just be me. Uh, so let's see if we, uh, different timing you can hear, but it definitely did a, a different. Oh, okay. I heard it now. Uh, <laughs> I try to like animate after the, the sound effect ends. <laughs> Sometimes that actually happens. Um, cause the, uh, the, the processing time of doing like real time audio effects can be delayed after the fact. So it's not entirely crazy for you to, for it to do that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but I think that I can definitely hear that, and it sounds really good. Cool, nice. <laughs> so this is will basically uh, say how fast it it goes from one point to another, and I think that we can make something like this, so uh, it gets like the highest uh, right at the end. Agreed. Can you hear that? Yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, but I think that I went too far. Or? Yeah, that's a really common practice in the sounds that I create all the time, just changing the type of fade that you have. So let's see how this is now. I, I actually don't know because it might sound bad. <laughs> sure. Turn off the, the music. In that it's still very low, but. Um, one thing that might not be helping is the fact that we have the. Or are you? You're just trying to fix the jump sound. You're not trying to fix the squash sound. Because are, are you just trying to hear like the higher frequencies more? Or are you trying to change the pitch? Because I'm wondering if you were to add another effect to the pitched one, um, and if you were to add a um, what's it called? If you were to add just like a high shelf. So yeah, if you go to the pitched bus and hit add effect, and click on high shelf filter. And set that to 15,000, the cutoff hertz. Um, so I, I just don't know if this is going to actually cut out the frequencies or if this is going to boost the frequencies. Because high shelf usually implies that it's it might be boosting it. I, I could be completely wrong, though. So what's the difference between the, the high pass and the high shelf? So basically, um, that is a high... That's a low pass. That's a low pass uh, filter, whereas a low shelf filter looks more like this. That's really the only difference. Instead of instead, it goes to like negative six decibels instead of like all the way it cuts it all the way out. So one of them cuts them out entirely, and one of them just cuts out all like sort of just lowers all the 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 higher or lower frequencies. Oh god! So basically, it, it doesn't cut. But it attenuates or decreases. Right. Oh, got it. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> it might sound bad. I apologize <laughs> in advance. <laughs> we are testing. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, that's all you can do. No! It actually sounds way better. Yeah! Awesome. There we go. <laughs> there we have it. <laughs> yeah. So let me try this again without the, the music. Yeah, that's another thing too. Listening with and without the music definitely is something to consider. Because sometimes even just like hearing it with the music goes, or with, without, with or without the sounds goes a long way. Or? Or? Yeah, it, it is really or? sounding very good. <laughs> good. I'm glad to hear. Or? Man, I'm so, or? I'm so glad about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, the character has a live. It's alive now, yeah. you know? I think that I will actually use this this jump, like, for when the character is walking like this. So, boink, 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 boink. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, just do, like, a higher-pitched one, right? Just do something, like, way more higher-pitched, right? For the little, like, jumps and such. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, I think that we reached a very, very good result. Very, very cool. So, Ryan, can you talk about Bleep Sounds a bit more so what people can expect to find there? Yeah, thank you so much for having me, first off. Uh, so, basically, Blip Sounds, we have a YouTube channel where we uh, teach sound design for video games. A lot of it is a lot of sound design, and uh, we have a whole community of people that make sounds for video games. We, it's it's an amazing community and everyone's so friendly but if you're looking to like start learning like the technical stuff that i showed off like the high pass filters or that we showed off i should say but the, a lot of the technical stuff like the high pass low pass filters pitch shifters and there's so many more that you can learn about uh, we have a free course on the blip sounds website uh, at blipsounds.com if you want to start learning some sound design right now but otherwise uh, come check us out on youtube and check out the video where i create the sounds that we used in this video from scratch so that's it thank you so much for hanging out with me ryan we did such an amazing job here and i really hope you enjoy it yeah i'm glad i'm glad that i'm, I'm glad i was able to take part in your video too i, I mean this is <laughs> I, I i'm gonna i'm gonna start using goto now <laughs> like i want to i want to be able to teach some people how to use how to do sound design in it so i'm excited thank you so much 
<laughs> awesome, good to know. So spread the word. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time.